And there we are. Good Saturday night, everyone, and welcome to the party that is five star car stereo. Good call. Good fault. Yeah. Uh, Way to no, follow through. No. Does it feel nice? I scrubbed this. Really? Yeah, because it's like after like that's a you know where the tree branch grows out. So we're gonna have another tree come we're out. We're gonna have another tree come out, <laughs> but no, it's like this scratch still bugs the shit out of me. But it is very. I, I gotta find like a rolling something that has like four shelves or three shelves. What? Like if there was another shelf here, here, and then one here, so we could set, like keep it there and put all the parts on it. Uh. Yeah, because it's like I, I, I really. At that point, we just grab the other one and have stuff over here. No, no, no. I mean, for when we're working on cars, silly. Ah, oh. because we've been putting all the stuff on yes. here, and yes. it's become very helpful. Yes, that way we can keep it off of the table saw table and have to move everything every time we want to use the table saw. You'd think we'd have this figured out by now, but you'd be hey. wrong. No, no. Well, What's up from Michigan, Timmy D? What's, What's going on? on? Drop us. All right. So what we got Cincinnati. We got Shasta Lake. Oh, that sounds. That Shasta sounds. Lake. California, Pennsylvania, Iowa. Kali Kali. Long Beach, Texas. Good evening to you from upstate New York. Maine. Fang of truth is in the house. Maine. It's cold there for sure. Cincinnati. Cold in PA. All right, let's go back. Good afternoon. Well, it's good evening here, but close enough. Uh, Long Beach, California. We were just oh, talking about Long Beach. Star Gosh. Wars Marathon on TNT tonight. Uh, okay. No. Why? <laughs> I'll be. I won't be. I won't be there. Texas in the house. Thank you. I was waiting for Texas. The Netherlands. Oh, look at that. Netherlands. Oh man. What's up? All the places we can't go right now. Our goal. The best love song. LC two I. Timmy D. The best. No, LC two I or Jail L O C twenty two. LC two I. Need add a sub. LC two I. Yeah. I'd go with that. Which Way is better. Dry pro. Way better. Or the pro. Ooh, get the pro. Get the yeah. Pro. Spend the extra money, get the pro, just because it's the AccuBase is way cooler. And just it comes that. with the base knob. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a warranty on the box. Where do I throw the box? Yeah. Hey, Washington is in the house. What's going on? Tulsa. Tulsa? Don't you want to go to Washington? I want to go to Washington. I know, right? Yeah, just, totally want to go to Washington. I know, that would have been, it's, a, it's past a year now. Uh, 20 degrees in New York. It's 70 degrees here. That's right. And I like it. I <laughs> uh, installed a JBL all in sub 20s, uh, Civic, high level connected. Yep, and I lost it. All I, right. got, I got so close into that. Yeah? Yeah, I know. I lost Denver, Oklahoma City. What happens if you put coaxes in a car that has components? That, wow. All right, thank you for asking that question. I actually, like, that's the first time someone's actually asked that question. Which one? What What happens if you put coaxial where there's a component? Oh, okay. okay. That's spectacular that you asked that. I mean, we, we actually did a truck today where it had a Bose system in it that we took out, and we just, because uh, it was an older vehicle, we just put four six and a half inch coaxials in it. Now, the question, though, is let's say we have a newer car, or if it was to keep the Bose system, and you put a coaxial, you took out that mid base and put a coaxial in it. Oh, let it slip. The mid base is the operative word there. So before you replace the speaker, if you were to take your ear and go down like this and Spanya. listen to what's coming out of that, that's like that, meaning it's got a limited frequency response <coughs> because it's a mid base. So in most cars within the last 10 years, if there is a component in there, there is some form of, not always, but some form of a passive or active crossover in there that is limiting the performance of that driver down in the bottom of the door. Now, in some cases, it's just a mid-range that is naturally rolling off, and if you were to put a coaxial in there, it will play all the way up. Um, but most of the time, it won't. It'll stop right where that one stops. So if you put a coaxial in the door where a mid-base was, well, then you won't hear it. Common application of this, which we hear all the time, is someone will talk to us about they just put a set of six by nines in the door of their Dodge, and it still sounds like crap. Well, they had an actively crossed over factory six, uh, six by nine inch subwoofer in the door, and they threw a set of four or five way six by nines in there thinking it was gonna get louder, and it didn't, because, well, it's actively crossed over, so you're not gonna hear that tweeter array on that speaker. So I guess the easiest way to look at it is you just have to pay attention to what is coming out of the door. 
if there is a full frequency coming out of it and you add a coaxial in there, it will get louder. If it's an actively crossed over signal coming out of the door, it's not going to get any louder. You're, you're going to lose that whole array. Wow, that was a good question. Thank All you right. for asking. That is, that, I, that, I deal with that a lot. It's, oh, I feel so good. Uh, Ontario, Canada. Hey, what's going on, man? All right, how can I use the Axis DSP with the DMA10? I'm going to say that's the DMA10, yeah. DSP A10. Yeah. I want to use the D10, the A10, in the 2019 Accord. Yeah. Also, it is true you don't care the Axis DSP. Uh, we do. Anymore. No, we, we carry the Axis DSP. Um, the probably. DSP was just out of, the X was out of stock. Out of stock, yeah. So they make two versions of it. They make a six channel version of it and they make a 10 channel version of it. If you're gonna be doing the DM810, you just want the six channel version of it, which consequently is the cheaper version. And when you set it up, you just leave it all set to full range. So you're just gonna leave it as a preamp. So you don't, you don't turn on the crossovers, the time alignment, or use the EQ for anything. So you just leave it all flat and you take that directly into your DM processor. It's a six channel output, so you can, if you get a 608, you can still run front, rear, sub directly into it if you like, or you can just run front into it if you like. You can do whatever you want as far as that goes, uh, but that's how you would do it. What's up? Don't use the features built in. What's up, David KM? What's up? Hello from Arizona. I installed a JVL all in. There it is. And sub in a 2014 Honda Civic, high level connected to the driver, rear, and sometimes I get a loud rumble. <laughs> yeah, while I'm driving. Yes. Yeah, in a Civic? Hmm. What year is the Civic? 2014. So which speaker did he connect to? The driver's rear? Driver's, Ooh, driver's rear. rear. That speaker there. All right, yeah. first things first. When you're sitting in the car, <clears throat> uh, even though Civics typically don't have them, look up at the headliner, Right about, if drivers so would be right about here, mm -hmm. see if there's a small plastic thing with a dot in the center. If it is, it's got ANC, which is automatic noise canceling. We need to disconnect that. Just Google Honda Civic ANC disconnect. It's gonna be a box somewhere in the car that you're just gonna unplug. Um, Civics typically don't have that unless they have yeah. premium audio. The other thing that could be happening too is that you have a crappy high level to low level and the rear speaker might be starting to blow. And when that happens, or the subwoofer itself, because remember, if you go back there and you push on that speaker, okay, and this is the speaker you tapped into for high level, you do this, that sub, you're getting signal into that woofer and it's gonna try to recreate that because you've moved the speaker up and down. So by using that rear speaker might not be your best option. You might wanna disconnect from there and go to the passenger front door, something that's farther away from the driver. Just a thought. Okay. All right. How do I connect my sync on my 2018 Ford F-150? Hi from Spain. Oh, hey, what's going on? F-150 after I change the receiver, just for maintenance purposes. Well, if you're doing a 2004, eight, 2018 F-150, depends on the size of the radio. If you have the bigger eight inch radio, then you would just go with the um, iData MFT-1 kit and then all that sync stuff would get moved over into the aftermarket radio through the iData connection. If it has the smaller three inch screen and you have to go with either the pack kit or the metric kit, uh, you're pretty much out of luck. Because it's, it's just not there. Uh, I found the truth, the local car stereo shop went out of business here. It uh. helped me a lot. Oh man. I mean, that's, it's not an uncommon thing right now because depending on your level of lockdown, as we know, we lost Frostbite Enclosures, which yeah. was an actual shop too, so that really sucks. Uh, what's up from San Antonio? What's up? Hey, when, where can I find a harness for a 2020 Frontier? I found nothing on Metra. If that's what was a 20, the question? 2020 Frontier, Nissan, Nissan? Nissan Frontier. If it ain't on Metra, it ain't exists yet. Yeah. So... Uh, I feel you guys would benefit from taking screenshots of long questions so they don't disappear just a thought. Or ask shorter questions. 
just just a thought too. Or you can. Uh, yeah. uh, are there any cheap he are there any cheap head units which can maintain factory parking sensors and air conditioning visualization? I have a VW CC12. Uh, okay, Slovakia. Oh, that's cool. All right, so I. Hold yeah. on, let me, let me answer the, the, the. Okay, so the problem is is the the O2 Volkswagen. O2? It, uh, 2012. 2012 Volkswagen, you'd have to see if there's something iData compatible with it. If there's something that's iData compatible with it, mm -hmm. that any any Kenwood, Pioneer, Alpine iData radio will work. Both Kenwood and Pioneer make like affordable RR compatible radios. So the first step is to go to idatalink.com and check to see if they make something for that car. So I head over to this page right here and see if they make anything. Uh, you may have to have it imported into Slovakia to get it. The other place you want to make, you might also want to <coughs> just check is Connects2, which is a website over, over there on that side of the planet. Um, they specialize in making things for European cars uh, on that side of the world. So that's Connex2. Uh, that would be the other company to look into. Okay. All right. Um, how will you use the audio control DMA10 with the 2019 Accord? Do you still recommend the Access DSP? Yes. How will I bypass the DSP to use the A10? You know, okay. So so if you have the Access DSP, let's say the six channel version of it that we just covered, they make a six and a 10. If you have the six, when you're in the setup, you just leave the crossovers off. You leave the time alignment off and the EQ set for flat. All it's gonna do at that point is just pass signal, full range signal. You're gonna take that six channel output if you wanna use all six channels and plug those into your DMA-10. And that's it. You're essentially using the Access to get you a clean signal, as it were, into the DM810. We do it all, you, you can do it with a DSR1, like if, you, you know, the DSR1 solution for all these cars here, if you don't like using the DSR1, and you'd rather use something like a DM810 or a, a bit or, or a, a Helix or something like that, you just don't, you just set it up for past, you know, just don't set any of the features on it, and it'll just pass, pass a clean signal all the way through. That's it, that's all you gotta do. All right. Uh, do you remember the harness for steering wheel controls that hook to the pack box? That you say plug it in or you will lose it. Can yeah. they be bought by themselves or if you lost it? What kind uh, of harness? They're talking about just the eighth inch headphone jack. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. that's it. Um, Pack parts, maybe? No, no, no. Pack parts doesn't sell that stuff because that's not the same company. Um, I would call their tech support and see if if they can get that to you. The other thing too is that you should be able to go to any authorized amp global authorized dealer and they can get you that piece. So it's not like it's unobtainable. It's just going to be hard to get from the internet. I guess it would be the easy way to say You could try calling tech support, <coughs> but your best bet is going to be to try to find a local dealer and then have them get you the part or sell you the part because, I mean, they can get the part. All right. Uh, force cam programming Ooh. can change from high-level to low-level outputs. If this is a good idea, question mark, it is a benefit. <coughs> force cam is a wonderful tool. If you know how to use it, and if you've watched all the videos, it's not particularly hard to use. So, what we always recommend people that want to use Forescan, which is a benefit, is just learn it, know it, have a backup of your car. If you ever have to take it in for service and you need to reflash it back to normal, be able to do that. Other than that, there's no reason not to use it. So, that's it. You know, we recommend if you're going to. Figure out how to do it on your own, because it's one of those things you don't want to have to rely on a shop to do for you, because if you ever need to revert back, you want to have access to those files to revert it back. But yeah, definitely do it. Well, there's no reason not to. I mean, 
you know, in the F-150, this DFO-3, th that's, they use the same tech that Forescan uses to flash the radio. Mm -hmm. And they use the same tech to on-flash the radio because it's basically just a little computer that does its thing. So, yeah, you, I mean, you can get the adapter for like 30 bucks on Amazon, you know, if you buy the good one. Uh, the shop argue with me. I'm sick of it. Oh, Kelly, that's wonderful. Great. The shop? A shop argued with her. Shops. I, w I know, man. I feel you. I totally feel you. Yeah. I argue with me all the time, too. And I argue with Dean all the he time. He argues with me all the time. It's all the time. frustrating as hell. Yes. Well, okay, all right, ahead. El Fuego. He dropped five bucks. Thank you, man. Thank you. Can I integrate my Rock 4 1000 X5 AD into my 2021 4 Runner using a DSR-1 B3 12 loaded box for the subs? Did they, they, um... Say so it's a 2020. 2021. 2021. Runner. So if it's a non-premium audio, it's Oof. still going to be four-channel output. So technically he could. You can, yes, but so if you, it is, uh... Because I, I think the T01 harness <coughs> is for the older Toyota. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's for the newer Toyota. I don't think they've gotten to that one yet. Um, but if it's a base model Toyota... Yes. Yeah, see, yes. This is, this is the old one. But T01. if it's the base model audio, I think... Because we've used that harness. I think Metro made it. Because um, remember on the newer one, the, the speaker wires are eight speaker wires off on their own plug over on the left side yeah. of the radio, or the passenger side of the radio. And uh, somebody made a harness for that. I don't remember, because I remember doing it. Huh. All but right. But yes, if, it, if it's a four channel audio only, then yes, there's no reason you can't use the DSR-1. Uh, Jeremy, thank you for the five bucks, man. Uh, do you ever do front speakers only install versus all four doors? I'm hearing mix options on that. Or do you do a system cons consulting? Thanks. Um, yes, we do have <laughs> certain customers that like to have just a front stage only. There's really nothing wrong with that. It just comes down to personal preference. And the price. And the price. Here's what I suggest you try out as far as mixed results go. Screw what people say, because after all, we're just talking to you about what we feel you might like by you telling us something. You need a real world application. So how would you do that? Well, the easiest way to find out if you're cool with just a front stage is fade the sound of your factory radio all the way to the front. Shut off the rears. Drive around like that for a day or two, playing the music that you listen to. And I understand it's not gonna be as loud as it's in depth and all that, but the reality is it's still gonna be the same feeling, meaning that sound is only coming from here. If you're cool with that and you're like, I like the way this works, mm -hmm, this might be for me, then by all means, <coughs> you're a candidate for that. If you go, no, this is kind of irritating, I'd like to have at least something, Mm -hmm. then you're going to want some form of a rear fill. And that's really it. That's that's what we do. You know, it's like someone comes in and there's hell bet on doing that. I say, all right, well, the next two days before we get to the, you know, it's going to be a month before we get to your car. So for the next two days, just drive around and let me, and tell me what you think. If, if that's cool, rock on. All right, let's see. Uh, will the Kenwood 7-inch speaker possibly fit inside of the 2017 Ford Fusion? Oof. That's on you, man. I mean... What year? It's a 2017 Ford Fusion. I'm trying oh, okay. to remember. If it's a six and a half, yeah, no, you no, can no, probably no. get they, it They fix. can with seven inch. Yeah, I mean, it's just a it's just a depth issue. Yeah, because that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know I if you, this one has the window um, arm in there close to it. Oh, man. I, I'm... So think about that for a minute. Uh, real quick, uh, when they were asking the question earlier about the um, Volkswagen, mm -hmm. uh, look to Car Gift's answer there. He lives over there. He's over in Portugal on that side of the world. So um, about what? Look to Portugal. Mm -hmm. He lives in Car Gift lives in Portugal. <laughs> so the question on the 2012 Volkswagen, he's giving you an answer to that question, and he's telling you they're <laughs> going to see Connects too. But if you want to privately talk to him he has a shop over there in the over over closer to you than we are um and so uh brian who thank we you. refer to when we have questions like that so if he chimes in and answers your question for the other side of the planet trust what he says all right thank we you do. brian for the five bucks david thank you for the 10 bucks man uh bill 
he dropped twenty dollars thank you will the lc2i pro really give me a remote signal any weird issue with that i want to get the signal from my factory sub sounding to the sounding good to be true lc2i <coughs> pro what it's using is signal sense or 12 volt trigger or dc offset before I go any further, Anthony's in the house for my car audio life. Woo! For you, car audio life? For his car audio life. Oh, you okay. say my car audio life. I don't know. It's somebody's <laughs> car audio life. Follow him on YouTube. No, okay. not yet, not yet. It's, it's, yeah, give it a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about those three things that I just mentioned. And I tried to make that as clean of a cut for Fernando as I can when he goes to edit this up to put it on Dina Fernando's car stereo clips. Make That's sure a, you follow uh, that. That's another YouTube channel we do where we take all your questions, we chop them up into the actual questions and try to make it easier for you guys to search. If you're not following us there, make sure you head over to that YouTube channel. You can find it by looking for the five-star logo, but with the cool USA flag. Now, back to the LC2i Pro and how it actually turns on. First off, signal sense. Signal sense is just that. It's looking for AC to come in, which sound is AC, and if it sees it, it goes, Oh, hey, I'm sound. I'm going to turn on. Mm -hmm. Not the best way to do it. It's the one that will false the most and give you the most headache. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Second is DC offset. You can test for DC offset with a digital multimeter. Um, Fernando would like to show you this. Let me go right there. You ready? Go ahead and hit the button. Now, DC offset is if you have a digital multimeter, set it back to DC, which is the line with the dots. Put one probe, the black one, to a ground. Take the red one and go to either one of your leads that are going to the speaker. Your meter should read six volts. If it reads six volts, cool. Turn your car off, wait for the car to go asleep because it might not turn off immediately. It might take a good, anywhere between 30 to three minutes for it to turn off. And that's it. That's 30 all seconds to three minutes. What did I say? You say 30 minutes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. There was 30 in there somewhere, yeah. okay? And that's DC offset. It's a great feature to use. We love it. We use it yeah. all the time, and it's very reliable. Yes. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Awesome. Um, so, there you go. All right. Uh, Kelly actually said, I need, to, I need a good, clean sound. She has a 2019 Silverado. Mm. I have an Audison amp and the LC7i. Infinity reference. 10 inch LC7i? kicker sub and a mono amp. I know. Why are we doing LC7i? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a 2019 Chevy Silverado. Oh, definitely. So that's probably why you had. Well, no, I don't think the Ampro works on the 2019. That probably had to be LC7i. Because I don't know if it's the 19 or the 20 that that stopped working on. I, uh, I don't know. Sure I could look it up. Either yes. way, she's got the LC7i. <clears throat> uh, okay. Well, okay. So if you if you he's if you she say it's a, it's a 2019 LC7i. Oh, well, she's got an Audison. It's an Audison amplifier. Why would she need a if she's got an Audison? Why would you need the LC? That has high low low built into it. Right. Well, oh regardless of God. that, okay. So we have Infinity Reference speakers Which in a nice. 10 inch, perfectly fine. Everything is cool. I would definitely recommend a DSP. Well, that's to get what, what Audison sound. does she have, though? Does she have the Audison amp like a Forza or something? Or is it just an Audison I don't, I, SR I don't, amplifier? Exactly. What kind of Audison amp is it? Like, what kind of what kind of Audison amplifier do but you have? But the real have? problem comes down to she can't find somebody in her area that isn't going to argue with her. Yes. And uh, do good work, which right. I think sucks. And if you're, I mean, if you have Audison, you can definitely give Electromedia a call. A call. Uh, it's electromedia.us, I believe, is how you'd find it on the internet. Mm -hmm. Lance. Um, and Lance is there to help, and he will definitely direct you help towards you. a dealer that would... Oh, no, they do make an amp pro for that. See, that's what I'm saying. Oh, they a make a sub amp pro. Yeah. yeah, so you would oh, <laughs> definitely not do the LC7. SR600. All right, so it's just, an ampl it's just a sub amplifier. Yeah, which is cool. It's but perfectly fine. That'll take an amp pro, so the APGM61 mm -hmm. would work in your car. Whether it's Bose or Nambos, yeah, yeah, go ahead. That one. So this would this would plug into the Bose or Nambos system, mm -hmm. uh, and give you actually six channel, full range with chime control. So your chime wouldn't be going boom, 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 boom. Clear um, sound. Clear sound. So yeah. you wouldn't have to worry about de deqing or any of that crap. Yeah, you knew it, right? You yeah. did know it because you yeah. probably watched the show and you know. And these guys are. Yeah. So here's what I suggest. Here's what I suggest. Um, 
Audison amplifier, the SR is a phenomenal amplifier. You got a great amp. I'm jealous because they didn't have that when I ordered my SR amplifiers, so I had to go with a monoblock and a four channel. <clears> and then like a week later, they came out with that one, so it sucks. Um, if it's the new one, anyways. Anyways, regardless, uh, give Lance a call and see if he can recommend. Thanks for stopping by, Car Gift. Thank, Thank you, for you your Car help. Gift. Um, give Lance a call and see if he can direct you towards somebody in your neck of the woods that will be able to help you get things going the right now, way. Now, also, uh, she only has an amplifier for the sub, not amplifier for the high. So basically, just oh, like, and she could have done so an amp pro, that, definitely, or a sub pro, definitely a sub pro, or add uh, an amplifier for the door speakers, or or screw all that. Okay. Get the amp pro, get a Forza or a Prima. Correct. Go out of the Prima with mm -hmm. the DSP into the SR amplifier to power the subwoofer. Yeah. Go full active and front with the, the front. Prima, because the Prima, you can bridge it. So to do tweeters on one and two, three and four over here, five and six, rear off of seven and eight. <coughs> the Prima is extremely reasonable and super small. Oh my God. Oh, so totally. Hey, any excuse to break out the Prima? If I yeah. Can off the shelf. Oh, I love this. These are my favorite little amps, but most people don't buy them because, well, you know, let's just say they're not the most, they're, they're expensive. But this one, the Prima isn't, this this guy's nice. This is, but anyways. I now you already switch it. You're trying to switch it. I don't know it. what I'm doing. But anyway, so here you go. This is it. As you can see, here's my iPhone 11. How cool is that, right? Very tiny. It is very tiny, but you can put something like that in there, and this will give you your DSP. This will give you everything you need. Um, and, and, and it's a Chevy, which means you don't have a lot of room anyways, so... <laughs> okay, well, I take this video and I like them much. Uh, they gonna Screw hate that. us. that. Find somebody else, man. Like I said, give Lance a call. <coughs> have yeah, him definitely. Have with a up with a good dealer uh, and, and go from there. Yeah, definitely call Lance and say, you know, I'm in this area. I would love to have a good dealer. They can take care of my car. You know, Lance Lance is going to be watching this video yeah. later tonight. He's going to be going, those mother... <laughs> Pretty much. And, and, and probably the, the other dealer. Are too. you ever too old for bass? No. Funny, no. The answer is no, but you'd be surprised how many people my age come in and go, I don't want any of that boomy stuff from when I was in high school. And I look at them and go, why? I mean, granted, yeah, what what do you, boomy stuff from when you, chances are when you were in high school, you didn't even have boomy stuff. I mean, come on. Like, Can't afford it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you're over here like that. Oh, yeah. give me a break. All right. Uh, yes. Sailor, thank you for the five bucks, man. I have a 2007 Cambry JBL system. I got a pack RP4-2TY11 with a JBC A30VT. Which wire do I connect for my amplifier? The solid blue or the blue and the white? The blue and the white. The answer is the blue with the white. Uh, that is the amplifier output. The funny thing that you asked that is <coughs> on most JVCs and Kenwoods, there's actually three blue wires. There's a solid blue, which is for your amplified antenna turn on. That is if you have one of those little shark fin antennas or window mount antennas, there's usually a turn on to turn on the booster so that you get FM signal. So the blue wire is to do that. The blue white wire is to turn on your amplifiers. And then there's also a light blue yellow wire and that is to do steering wheel controls. Now that is a Kenwood JVC thing. On Alpines, they may have the blue wire and the blue white wire. Keep in mind, these are standard <coughs> colors, so it really doesn't matter what brand radio you have. If it has these colors, mm -hmm. then these are how this works. The other one, of course, is Pioneer. Sony, I'm not sure if they have a blue and a blue white, so I, I, everyone is going to have at least a blue white, which is where I was going to. Now, if you're installing a radio and it does have an amplified antenna turn on, a blue output, from the factory side, let's say you plug it in, your antenna adapter, and it has a blue wire hanging off of it. Hook that up to accessory if the radio you're installing doesn't have that amplifier turn on. The reason for that is that on those, those factory radios, that turn on output is going to be more than 500 milliamps, which is bad for most radios. They don't like that. That output on the antenna output is 
more powerful, usually, than the blue one, the blue with the white stripe, I should say. Let's not confuse the two. So you'd want to hook that up to the red wire. What happens sometimes if you connect all the blue wires up to that blue-white is that without putting a relay on there, you can cause issues with the radio. So we don't want to do that. So blue-white turns on amplifiers only, nothing else, just amplifiers. If you do more than two amplifiers, add a relay. Anything else that needs to turn on, either hook it up with accessory or hook up a relay. All right, Brinkman86, thank you for the five bucks, man. I just bought a 2014 Honda Civic Hybrid. I was just wondering if there's any difficulties? Difficulties. Difficulties. Okay. To adding components up to a full sound stage. Mm. Does it have the factory tweeter pods? Is really right. the question you it's ask. It's a 2014. It's a 2014. <clears throat> if it's a 24. Every Honda has an option for factory tweeter pods. Because the, uh, every, every everyone had the option to, to have a premium sound. Now in every Honda, you gotta cut the metal if you're gonna put a bigger magnet. If you're gonna put a big magnet, you do have to cut the metal and or get a shallower mount speaker. Like the Morel. Or the Kicker KS. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, the Morels. Oh, we've done those in the Hondas. Those mm -hmm. sound really nice. We're talking about the Carbon Ultra Nano. Yeah. Um, ooh, we haven't talked about these in a while. Oh, yeah, good call. Bring your arm. All right, hold on, let me just. Oh, all right. I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. Look at these guys. I know, right? Look at that. So you don't have to worry about, what does it say, where's Depth. the camera? Depth issues are not a problem with these uh, bad boys. All right, you do your thing. But anyways, back to the question at hand. So, what I was gonna recommend, look at the mid-range, that's a three-way. I mean, so the, the mid-range is bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's awesome. Yeah, but the tweeter, I think the tweeter's okay. Yeah, yeah. I but mean, it's close, literally. it's close. You can and these do, these do it. sound incredible. They sound uh, really nice. So what I was getting at is that if you want to do a component set, mm -hmm. you could probably find, especially something that age, you could probably find the tweeter pods somewhere online, <coughs> or you could buy them from the Honda dealership. They're really not that expensive, and that way you don't have to like cut up. Now, if you're a fabricator at heart or just like to have some fun, you could also take your sail panels. That's what those are called. Those little mirror panels are called sail panels and you could get in there and fab up something cool. All right. The Vertical, thank you for the five bucks, man. 2018 Dodge Durango with the factory amplifier. Can I use an APH CH01 at the rear factory amplifier to install LC7? Why would we do any of this? No. Why would you just get the AP? Just get they make the ampro for what they the, make the ampro for guys. No, just go go back out. I mean, you could, but yeah, why would you? Why want would you to? do that? Yeah, that no. That doesn't make any sense. Look. Doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, dude, you could plug a DSR one in. Hey, that would probably be the better move. Let's be honest. The better move is unplug that factory amplifier, get a <coughs> DSR one, and get the uh, CH either CA ACH two three or four, depending on which one you need for your car. Plug it, and then you can plug that in right there at the amplifier, and you'll have eight channels of preamp output. It'll be awesome. But they make an amp pro for that too. Um, but yeah, why would you? All right, Jeremy, he dropped five by. He said, "What is your favorite six and a half component set right now, and what amplifier would you drive with?" I don't have a favorite. Um... It's just like we said, Dodge, right? We said Dodge. We said, I uh, what mean, year? Uh, was an 18? Oh, hang on, hang on. I'm trying to go back. Uh, 2018 Dodge Durango. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I like all these premium speakers, man. Six and a half. They're amazing when you like put it together with a nice amplifier, nice DSP, and a good tune. They're going to do amazing. Um, like the Morels, the new Morels. Amazing. So go to idata.com. Here you go, 2018 Dodge Durango. Mm -hmm. um, you can get into the, you can get the CH, ACH4 harness if it's the premium. You just answer the questions. So in this case, Dodge Durango 2018 with the Harman card. And if it doesn't have the Harman card, you just select without amplifier, with amplifier. Um, without Harman Kardon, so if it's the non ampli it's the amplifier, but with that, there again, same harness. Now you need an ACH2, but this will give you a full preamp. 
And you don't have to do the DSR-1. If you want to do that, you can also do like a Bitnove from Audison. That'll work as well. They're, they make harnesses to, you go with the AR, which is right above my head, and then go with the Bitnove with their harness. But the thing, you, you, you got to get past the LC7i, the LC2i. I love those it's pieces. It's a great product. But it's the wrong piece for what you're trying for what to you're do. Trying you're going to gonna be fighting yes. a battle of just, you're going to get it in and yeah. you're going to go, why does it sound terrible? Yeah. I mean, if you have an older car and all that stuff, perfectly fine, right? With these no, new cars, I mean, it just well, doesn't make sense. I'm just saying, like we always say, you know, use the right product for what you're trying to do. Uh, is it okay to overkill my whole car? If it's loud and it bothersome, by all means, do it. All right. All right. Especially if you can do it yourself. David West, he dropped five bucks. Thank you, man. Any words on the OEM Plus audio components? I like the idea for their drop-in toolbox subwoofer for a double cab Tundra. Who makes a toolbox speaker? Toolbox subwoofer for a double cab Tundra. I don't know. I mean, I any worse on the OEM plus audio components? Is it a Toyota Tundra? And we want OEM style components. I mean, if you if okay, so let's let's try to break this apart. If you want OEM style components to go on a Toyota, we're either going to go with Powerbase or Focal. Both of those are going to have OEM style components that will plug right in. Mm -hmm. If we're trying to put something in a toolbox, probably going to want to either find something that's Rhino lined, maybe check out A-Trend, see if they make something that's Rhino lined that would fit inside of the toolbox. I don't know how that's going to sound though, um, or you're going to have to have something custom made. Uh, if it's a four-door, Depending on the year, uh, I know Fox, Box, Fox Acoustics makes one to go behind the back seat and some of the Toyotas, so maybe check that out. But what brand is OEM? <laughs> Hope that's a joke. Mm. All right. Yes. This one is it's, it's a good one. Okay. Aren't they all? <laughs> all right. I'm uh, that sincerely. Does the JVC with a huge... <laughs> all right. Why <laughs> read this one? I got it. <laughs> hey, Dean and Fernando, does the JVC with the huge screen you've been doing the video on have the Kenwood audio file components yet? I love options for the head unit, but if I spend that much, I don't actually have an answer to that one. Well, they actually, JVC have the K2 technology that is well, no, like... just No, what he's talking about is the audio grade components inside of it that makes the XR the same. I don't think I... this has the XR circuit board <clears throat> because I believe this radio that we're talking about, the, the, the W1000 mm -hmm. or the, whatever it's called, the one, I, sorry. Um, this one right here, I believe that, I'm oh, sorry, the ZW1000, this one. I believe this one is based off of, yeah, this, this is the one we're talking about here. Um, I believe this one is based off of the normal. Oh, no, let's see right here. Okay. It's, it's a big box. It's a big this box. <laughs> um, I think this is based off the, the basic Kenwood radio. I don't think it has the XR sound package in it. It has the same EQ features built into it. So, like, processing all that is the same. But I think the circuit boards in the XRs are different. I will check into that to make 100% <clears throat> sure so that I can, I'll, I'll talk to Seth next week and find out um, and just be, you know. All right, what's your take, uh, Quentin, uh, he dropped five bucks, thank you, man. What's your take on six and a half components versus the six and a half pro miss and super tweeters? Not sure which route to go in my avalanche for Best loud, clear sound. Thank you, Kelly, for the five bucks. Best loud, clear sound. <clears throat> okay, so uh, how clear hurts. do you want to be? I mean, do you want to do this? Is that clear? Clear enough? I mean, I, I, I would go with the SPL shows. SPL shows, Hertz. Yeah, check out the Hertz SPL shows. If you want, loud. as you said, loud and really nice and sounding, better than what you're looking at. <sighs> More than likely now for. Um, did you get a cough drop, man? I, it, I don't know. Take a cough drop. I, I almost. I'm just saying. This thing. Anyway. Anyways, the Hertz SPL shows are phenomenal. They're mm -hmm. some of the best loudspeakers you can get your hands on. But yes, if that's the sound you're going for, I would check those out because they make a really nice set. 
Uh, and then there again, you buy them just like you do regular loud. So they they make a six and a half inch mid bass. Ooh, scary, scary thought. Mid range, not just a horn, not not a closed back like giant six inch tweeter. Um, but they're pro tweeters that they make. They look like <coughs> everyone else's in the pictures, but once you actually see them in reality, you're like, wait, no, 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 these are a totally different animal. So like their neo tweeters are a lot different than everyone else's neo tweeters. Jason, Jason the Jed, thank you for the five box, man. Um, somebody say, hey, did the aftermarket radios make a roll off? Something? A base roll off? It has base roll off. No. No. They don't have base roll off. But, all right, so let's talk about base roll off for a minute and let's kind of try to make it make sense with what you might be experiencing in an aftermarket radio. Aftermarket radios have a feature called loudness. All right, and most radios have like loudness one through three or loudness high, low. Loudness is what bass roll off is basically built <coughs> off of. Bass roll off is, for those of you who have never seen it, is, is the system volume goes up, the subwoofers plateau and don't get any louder, but the mids and highs are, just keep going. Loudness yeah. is basically the same thing. It is, I used to have this on my laptop here. Um, it's a curve that is designed to make music sound more impactful and vivid. It boosts both the treble and the subwoofer at lower volumes. Uh, if you have an aftermarket radio and go in the menu, you can turn it on at a normal listening level. It will do that. It'll be like, oh, wow, this sounds a lot better most of the time. And as you turn the volume up, it will flatten out, which would be basically bass roll off. So if you're listening to an aftermarket radio with loudness on, it will give you the illusion of bass roll off, but it's not the same thing. It will continue to get louder, just not at the same rate as the mid range, because keep in mind, the way the loudness curve works is mid range is here, subwoofer is here, and as you turn it up, it comes like this. So the mid range will perceivably get louder. So if you ever want to hear what bass roll off sounds like, you can demo it on your aftermarket radio, but that's probably what happens. If you turn bass, if you turn loudness off, everything will play flat at every volume. That's fine. Uh, somebody say, I'm 50 and give me boomy stuff. Yeah, why not? What is boomy stuff? The way you said that. Well, just... boomy, like, I say boomy, like. I don't know, it sounded like you said something else. All right. Um, Audio is too complicated. <sighs> Sometimes. Sometimes. Is anything not complicated anymore? I mean, let's be honest. I mean, hell, just setting up voicemail on a phone can drive you up the goddamn wall. I agree. You know? Agree. So, the other thing, too, is it's just, it's, it's how deep you want to get into something. Right. If you actually want I'm going to turn my loudness it. off. There again. It all depends. Like, I like to have loudness on because I don't particularly listen to it that loud, and sometimes... But then again, when I'm listening to radio, I have to turn my loudness off. I don't even know. I have to see if it's on or off right now. Hmm. Mm. Okay. I've been listening to talk radio in the EU. For those of you guys that are overseas, I listen to an LBC. It's called LBC. I don't remember what the LBC stands for, but it's it's funny because it's it's. In, I I can't understand the callers most of the time because their accent is so thick, but. I like it because it's a different perspective on the news. All right, Sailor Jerry, another five bucks. Yeah. Same 27, 2007 Cambry on the RP 4.2 TY11. There is two CAN bus wires. What are they for? CAN bus is the data that talks to the car. So think of it as like a USB system that's throughout the whole car. Everything is connected to the CAN bus wires. If you have a push to start or a key in the dash, it doesn't matter. It's not actually doing anything like it did back in the 80s and 90s. Back then you put a key in, you do this, there's a tumbler, there was little metal pieces in there and it would all touch and they'd go off to these big wires and some would go out to the hood and start up the car and the others would go off to the fuse box and turn on the radio. None of that stuff exists in the modern car. Now when you put a key in the car or push the button, it talks to a body control module, or BCM for short, and that BCM takes that data in. Now that, that highway of communication coming from here to there is some form of can, LAN, most, and there's a half dozen others that is what is talking to the computer. Now, when you look at something like a smart module, like, like an AR or an RR or a PAC module or an access module or a Zen module or a, a Connects 2 module, 
those modules are tapping into that data bus and taking the code off of that to do specific things. So for example, there's no accessory wire in your car anymore. There are sometimes wires that will pass accessory, but it's not a true accessory. It's usually there's a transfer point somewhere and from where the relay was to where this is going, it is acting like accessory. It's not like in the 80s or 90s when there was a dedicated accessory wire that turned on and off with the key. That doesn't exist in the modern car. What's happening now is that that CAN bus is telling the radio, hey, guess what, Tom? The key's on. The mm -hmm. key's on, yeah. Or even better yet, when you hit unlock on your car, that's registering in the body control module, and the body control module is going, hey, guys, wake up. They're all getting ready to turn <laughs> us on. And so the radio goes, oh, OK. That's why when we were talking about um, DC offset earlier, why it takes 30 seconds to three minutes to turn off, because you have to wait for the radio in the car to deboot itself or reboot itself. So the same is true. Like if you hit unlock, that will turn on immediately. Like if you've ever watched a video where we've talked about a Ford and we have like a Zen piece back there, it's usually on before we do anything. That's because the car is waking up. The body control module keeps telling it, hey, there's a door <coughs> open. We may want to do something. Like what? I don't know, go somewhere. So those, yeah, I know, BFD. So that's what those wires are doing. Those wires are telling that module, hey, uh, I'm an illuminate, the lights are on, dim the radio. Hey, uh, we're moving. So it's reporting in the VSS or vehicle speed pulse into the radio so that these new uh, wireless CarPlay and Android Auto wireless radios that are asking for VSS, that data is there. Uh, or reverse, hey, I'm going in reverse. There's very, you know, that's why we say if you can't find it, get it at the light because chances are good it's nowhere up here at all or it's located on the transmission which is the report wire going off to the body control module so finding these things is just fun but that's why smart modules exist and that's why these wires are cool now in the in the case of like most bus for gm mm -hmm. the sound actually travels over the bus and a to b same way so it's not just bus for data in the sense of like electronics it's buses for sound that's why we can add things like these harnesses and get cool, like, take away all the BS that the factories put in there. That's why we keep telling you, you gotta do, like, hit those spots that we always, like, hey, you know, uh, before you start and go spend money with Crutchfield or whoever, you head over and you check these sites out. Pack-audio.com, maestro.idatalink.com, metroonline, navtv.com, and Mobridge, USA. These are all the places that we go to find data interfaces for cars. All right, tight MF, five bucks. GRTSS from Cali. Hey. How do you create dynamic wrench in a system in terms of tuning and gain settings? Staging, I'm sorry. Gain staging. Dynamic. Dynamic. I don't, I don't know what, what you mean by dynamic. I mean, I feel dynamic is the music you play more so than anything else. Um, like, if you're listening to a soft and, and basic piece, there might be no dynamic to it. Um, it all comes down to the EQ curve, I guess, and the speakers that you chose. So if you okay. choose a speaker that is soft and quiet, well, it might not suit what you call dynamic. Um, whereas you pick a tweeter on a mid-range that's like very efficient or um, like a hard dome tweeter that's going to report that sound very vividly or a metal tweeter that might give you the dynamics you're looking for um, it just it just depends uh, when you're looking at a system like when 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 you put a set of focal flax in a car and you look at the sound coming out of it on the rta uh, if you look at it and you say, all right, well, I don't want to flatten these out. I want to let the speakers play their natural characteristics. That might be the dynamic you're talking about. Um, setting something perfectly flat on an RTA or following that generic house curve um, isn't going to be dynamic. It's not. Looking at what the speaker's doing and let it complement the system, that might give you that dynamic sound you're looking for. So basically when you're tuning a system, you know, if you're going to go for the more dynamic, well then try not to do away with all the sound that the speaker's trying to create and maybe go with a more um, peaky, as it were, curve on the RTA through the DSP. 
I love 25 to Live, man. He's awesome. He comes up with some really good ones. <laughs> really, really Guys, nice. you got to try the Chet. What the, the, the cheddar, cheddar Chalupa, Chalupa from Taco, Taco Bell. <laughs> I might. I would try that because it's yeah. a cheddar. Yeah, because I don't, you know, I'm cool with cheese. I mean, I, I don't eat a lot of it because it just goes right through me. All right, I, I tried to find some this one and I can't. Um, you can't find it. What causes a D, DTC of audio? You told me that, that was a DTC of audio right rear circuit open. DTC. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kelly. I don't remember. Uh, I just want to rock out to Led Zeppelin and feel like I'm in a concert. Enough yeah. said. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So what was that? It was the other day I was playing, um, what Led Zeppelin song was that that I was playing? Um, um, oh my gosh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Uh, Where is it? Uh, ah, it's right there. <laughs> um, Cashmere. I was playing Cashmere when I left my house, and it was still playing when I got here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah I remember. I was at like, yes. Yeah, because I was at like 19 in Main Street, and, yeah, I, pressed, and I put in Cashmere, and I listened to it the whole way through traffic all the you way to work. You bark and still playing. Like, I was like, damn, that's a long <laughs> song, man. But... Yeah. All okay. right. Yes. For a sound quality bill, what would you recommend for components under the 300 or below? A pair wrench. I've been told Infinity Kappa, but quite a few. I have a six and a half all around. So one of the things you're going to find is that no matter who you ask, everyone's going to have a different opinion. Correct. So if you, if somebody says Kappa, which is a great speaker, JBL, same company, great speakers. Um, Everyone makes that affordable $300 set. So like even in the Focal line, mm -hmm. they have the integration, which is going to be right around that price point. Mm -hmm. uh, all radio brand manufacturers such as Alpine, Kenwood, Pioneer, Sony, all make a speaker in that price point. They're all pretty good. $300 is a great price point to be in. Morel makes one at that price point. Um, everyone has that $300 price point. The problem is, is figuring out what's good for you. The question you might want to ask is not necessarily take somebody else's recommendation, but figure out what it is about sound that you enjoy. And this is where the hard part comes in. Uh, a lot of the times, I'm going to tell you, and we've said it time and time again, it comes down to the tweeter. What type of tweeter? And the reason why is because the tweeter is going to be the most prevalent thing there. Everyone loves good deep mid bass. Everyone loves it. But it's that tweeter that is what is the salt and pepper from that component set. So. If you like silk soft dome or hard dome, hard domes can still be made out of cloth. They're just it's it's a resin that goes in there. Mm -hmm. Like all the Focal stuff is a hard dome tweeter, whether it be metal or cloth. They're all hard dome. Brands like Morel, Audison, uh, and several others out there. I'm just to name a few because you know uh, Audio Frog. Um, they're 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 a dome, a cloth. That doesn't mean that they're any less loud. Like. I'll take a Hertz any day and put it up against that Focal. They're both equally loud, it's just it's a different sound. So that's one of those things you really need to try to experiment with and find out. And that's going to be hard to do because unless you can get into a stereo shop that has speakers on display or a car, then you kind of, hmm, what are you going to do? So I can't give you a great answer other than to you got to do your research. All right. Hertz SPL line. Yes, that's what we were talking yes. about earlier. Check them out. Awesome. If you want loud, that's what you're going to get. They will make you. All right. I add an LC7i amplifier, speakers, and a JL Audio sub to a 2020 Toyota Tundra. Okay. The head unit, uh, I'm guessing it's the factory head unit. The sound is way better, but still no great. Is that a stock head unit really neat? It's really that radio. I mean, let's be honest, most factory radios, they're just band-aids. Mm -hmm. But the problem that you have is that there was, the one thing that was missing, there was no equalization in there whatsoever. The stock radios aren't terrible. They're just not aftermarket radios. So you have to have something in there to fix it, to correct it, to make it sound better than what it was. Otherwise, all you're doing is amplifying the existing sound. That's why we constantly talk about EQs and DSPs. Mm -hmm. I am not opposed to going with an LC7i in most situations. It's right. a great product to go with. However, if you want to go with something like an LC7i, don't go with the LC7i. Spend a little bit more money and get the LCQ1. It's an LC7i with an EQ. Yeah. Okay. So basically what you have here is 
six high pass bands, six high pass bands there again, and five low pass bands. So you have, this is gonna be front rear, this is gonna be sub. If you combine the two, you have five, six, that's 11. You have 11 band EQ for your sound stage to make it sound amazing. It still has AccuBase, still has all the game level controls. It's an LC7i with an EQ built into it. So it's super simple as far as, uh, you don't have to be intimidated by plugging into a laptop or getting into time alignment, doing all that crazy stuff, which honestly in a Toyota, it's okay not to. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, but LCQ1, that will make your system sound a lot better. <coughs> and, and if you have an LC7i already, it's literally just unplug the LC7i and plug this in. Want, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I know, right? Uh, Air I, uh, Ace. Hey. To drive five bucks. Thank you. Why is there an enclosure subwoofer amplifier package that can be plugged in into a power only and pick up signal wirelessly, wirelessly, for simple install base? Because right now there's not a, <clears throat> there's not a system in the car that is transmitting that sound out. So like think of it this way, uh, like like you have Bluetooth in yes. your laptop and that Bluetooth you can pair a mouse you can pair a keyboard and you can just pair a set of headphones those are three different Bluetooth's happening in there they're not the same Bluetooth they're just under the umbrella of the technology that is Bluetooth mm -hmm. and your car it may have Wi-Fi it may have Bluetooth however none of those things are there to do anything other like the Wi-Fi in your car is there to surf the internet uh, it's not and also to do updates for the vehicle but it's not there passing audio between your phone and the radio. Now, if you look at like Wi-Fi for CarPlay and Android Audio, Audio Auto, there uh -huh. you go. It's a peer-to-peer -peer that is passing that network, but it's not opening that up to a, a new source yet. So in the future, there's a possibility that yes, with a Wi-Fi hub inside of a car, mm -hmm. we might be able to do that. But for mm -hmm. right now, we're not that cool. Now, keep in mind, you still the have Bluetooth to sucks. run. You still have to run power ground. Yeah, I mean, right, do we have any more? Uh, yes, we have one more. All right, uh, hit it. Les, We're running out of time. Les Carr, five bucks. Thank you. What is the best DSP to use in a 2019 Ram 2500 with the Harman Kardon system? I'm doing a complete bill and replace all the speakers to go louder. Thank you. <laughs> all right, so 2019 Dodge Ram, it'll take an Amp Pro. Yep. So if Plug that in, that'll get you six channels of preamp output. You can go to pack rocom and check that out. And you can use anybody's DSP. Now, if you'd rather take the factory amplifier out and capture that room, there's two DSPs right off the top of my head that you can go with. One, of course, is the DSR-1 that we've talked to with probably the CH4 adapter. There again, you can go to idatalink.com and check that out and they will tell you the answer. There's a second DSP that'll also work with that and that is using the AR harness, this cable, and that would be the Audison Nova, Bit Nova, okay, which is this one here. Now the difference between this and that is obviously this is gonna cost you more money because it's a bigger DSP, it's got a better DAC built into it, and it's a nine channel DSP as opposed to an eight channel DSP. This is gonna be set with a Windows laptop, this is gonna be set with an iPad. This will give you front, tweeter, front, mid, rear, and sub output because it is nine channels. It has the ninth channel for the subwoofer, so you can do a bigger system than you can do with the DSR-1. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, both of them <coughs> will allow you to do whatever you want. So you have, you have several options available to you right there. And with that, guys, what, what do we got? Uh, I just wanna say, uh, Jesse, thank you for the five bucks. Uh, how can I diagnose uh, whiny noise? Mira, if you have an ex Mira? extra, I know, I was like, if you have an extra RCAs, try to plug it into the RCAs and in the radio, see if you, the RCAs are bad, check your ground, uh, grab your phone. Phone. Plug Start it with in the phone. and see if it actually has noise. Get, a, get an aux jack to RCAs and yeah. plug that into the amplifier and start Sometimes there. Sometimes it's the that bad That way you equipment. can kind of figure um, out what the heck is going on. If you're getting yep. noise from your phone, then it means it's not coming from the car. Yeah. So the other thing too, than... grounds, check your battery voltage, take your digital multimeter, go to the battery, power and ground, see what's going on there, write it down, go to the amplifier, see what it's doing there. Yeah. Secondly, uh, uh, why did my brain just shut down? Um, there was something else I was gonna say. Oh, gains, turn your gains down. 
Turn your game Most down. Most engine noise is as simple as yeah. I have my gains up too high. Yeah. And with that, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. It has been a wonderful show. You guys have been a great audience as always. We love it. We have a lot of fun <laughs> doing guys. this. That's the only reason why we do it. Of course, let's pedal some wares. If you guys want to get a cool t-shirt, you can head over to teespring.com slash store slash five star where you can find cool t-shirts. Support it. And of course, you can find also The Boring Life of Dean and Haley. That's right. That's that other YouTube channel I have because I don't do enough as it is now. Right. Uh, big sponsor of the show is iDatalink. They're just not the solutions. They are a supported brand that we know, love, and respect, and you should too. Pack we talked about a lot today, as well as DNF Tool Drawer. That's right, DNF Fanatics Tool Drawer is a place you can find all the cool tools that we use in our installation videos. So if you've got, like, I wonder what that was, check DNF Tool Drawer. Chances are good it's somewhere on that page. And if it's not, well, remind us of one of these shows and I'll put a link to it. Thank Bye you guys. guys. Have Bye a great Christian. weekend. Bye.